Okay, so now um, I'm going to talk a little bit about using the model because if you have a model, um, you can experiment a little bit with simulations or with analytic, analytical expressions to try to design the controller before you implement it. In some cases, actually, we've done that with the analog meter. We just you can close the loop and just build it and, and spend a lot of time tuning and without a lot of insight. But it's it's instructive and and uh, I think helpful in, in terms of understanding how say PID controllers work to, to actually play with the model. You can use a model that we've developed and you know now we looked at open loop in lab simulations. Now you can actually build a little closed loop controller and look at look at, at what the gains might be if you have a good model. You can actually come pretty close to what the gains should be rather than trying to experimentally find the right solution. Again, that's uh, in the absence of having any other analytical expressions or more sophisticated methods for finding uh, the correct tuning. You can also try to identify what are some critical metrics that you're trying to associate with the system that helps you build the system a certain way and, and uh, it might help you even define what tests you want to run on a control system. Again, so the simulations can help you reveal also some practical problems and does it take too much power? You can actually look at, okay, how much force is being sent or how much voltage is being sent to, to make the system do something. You can look at uh, the, the current draw as well and say, wow, that's more power than I have available. So there's some practical things you can discover from doing this analysis. So having the model is very helpful. So um, as part of this next pre-lab, this is the pre-lab three for this lab, um, I'm going to want you to take that uh, lab view model that you have, that open loop model, and um, if you think about it, we have this analog meter. What we're going to be doing is building everything else in lab view, right? We have the sensor and vision, and we're going to actually use the LabVIEW control and simulation module to, to build this, this controller in different ways. We're really not going to worry about disturbances too much. Um, but uh, So we're really going to just have voltage coming out of the controller and driving that analog meter. And this is, you think about it, actually what's in here is the MyDAC. Everything's in, in, in LabVIEW and in the MyDAC in this case, in our current implementation. And so what you can do with the simulation is build this little architecture and play around with it in simulation. So let me show you uh, some ways of doing that. So as I mentioned in, in the control and simulation module, if you look under the menu item for uh, controllers, you'll find um, a PID controller. It's already built for you. You can build it yourself and this actually shows you if you op open up the, uh, the two different types. As I mentioned, the um, and I'm going to show this to you, but in in the um, in the menu for the PID controller in in lab in the current LabVIEW uh, implementation, you you can choose academic versus parallel, and you can see these are exactly the kind of PID controllers that I just showed you. So these have three different parameters that you have to choose. Um, they actually also have on the derivative control a little first order filter here, right? And um, uh, that helps with the derivative. Sometimes when you take the derivative of, of a signal, if it has noise, um, the, uh, it, it'll, it'll cause a lot of amplified noise, right? You're taking the derivative of noise, so it makes it larger and it's problematic. So a lot of times when you digitally, remember all this is happening digitally, both simulation and when you implement it in my DAC, if, if, if you take the derivative, but if you also pass it through, through a low pass filter by, the, by using this transfer function. You can choose then this. So in fact, there's actually more than three parameters. You have to actually also have to choose this, but this one actually ends up being hidden. I think you can go in there and play with it, but this is just a uh, um, like a first order time constant. We're not going to worry too much about that. Um, if you want to go in there and play with it, you can. So here's the how the parallel is implemented. You can see it's got the the error comes in, and then there's a proportional path, an integral path. You you multiply by the integral gain, take the integral, and then and then come to the adder here, and then the derivative. Also, you take the error, take the derivative of the error, and there's a little filter in there, and then add those all up, and then that's your output action. And here's the other type. So here's the academic version, parallel version. So I'm gonna show you here. Here's a little. If you see, this is. Little snippet. I just pulled out just the part that shows. Remember, this is exactly the same model. Here's our plant, right? And we're kind of specify the voltage in here, 
and we're measuring that and look here's our feedback path so the direct feedback we're assuming that we have a perfect data measurement right and come back here and look we go right into a summer and we're, here's our error so we're, here's our desired angle as before instead of passing it just through here and look I'm passing to around it here here's our feed forward using our static gain right here's our static gain forming the error and then putting it into my PID and I'm going to show you in a second how you can make sure that you've got these terminal connections so you can put your KP, KI, KD control gains on here. You sum those two up and that makes your total voltage. Note I put again the limiter here because you want to make sure that that voltage is within the confines of your system uh, as practically implemented uh, uh, in the lab. Okay, and then there's the graphing. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, at that in LabVIEW. Okay, so if you look at, at, at this model, it's exactly just like the open loop model that um, we did in the first pre lab. And, um, and what we have now is we've just added on this, what we call the forward path, the error form form by taking the, the error out of the transfer function and just you have a feedback path here. The mirror, note that that's a negative there. Right? When you double click on here, you can change the sign on these, right? So that has to be a plus. There's a minus there, and this one is not connected. And that that's how you, that's how you form that sum block first. And then here's your PID. I'm gonna look at that in a second. And then you're adding two different control inputs. One is the feed forward path, or the if you want to just look at feed forward and no feedback, and uh, or feed forward in addition to feedback. And then I've got the uh, the sum the, uh, the the saturation here. Right. Remember that's just limiting the the lowest and the highest value that you can have. And the rest of this is the same as before, so very simple to implement a, a nice um, feedback uh, simulation. Let me double click on here to show you. Note that the terminal, there's terminal connections here so that on the front panel you have your control gains, but what you're going to have to do when you drop this originally from your control design simulation is you have to come in here and tell each one of these right that you want them. So when you click on proportional gain, tell it not to be in, in, in here but to be on the terminal, right? And um, so that's that. Oh, and here's where you can select where either parallel or academic, right? And there's actually a series one, which I haven't even looked to see where that one is. Okay, so um, that's that. Just to show you, um, that's a control and simulation of you. If you click in here, right? Control, design, simulation, right? Go into simulation, and it's under controllers. All right, so, and I'm using just the same, which is following that same um, trajectory. Everything else is the same. Let's go to the front panel. So you can see I, I've, I, here, here are the uh, proportional integral derivative gains. I have some values in there. I'm not sure how those are going to work. can't remember the last time I ran this. Right now, look, I have zero because I don't have anything on the feed forward path. Okay, I'm going to leave that at zero. Let me just run this. And I have some typical values. Um, by the way, this this KDC here should be KQV, but it's okay. It, it's KDC up here. That's the way I had it originally defined. Um, I'll change that before I give you this as a uh, as a, you know what I'm not going to give you the starter PI. Uh, you can build it from the uh, from the original one from scratch. You already have seen the uh, block diagram. Let's just run this guy, and you can see. And let's play around with the tuning and see what we can. All right, so. You can see it's the result of my having tuned it already, but on the top here I'm plotting the voltage that's predicted coming out of the controller, right? There's no feed forward, it's just pure feedback. And then here's, um, let, let's, um, let's actually start all over, okay? Let's, let's, let's uh, make the derivative zero, integral zero, and let's make the even the proportional um, zero, but then let's put some feed forward here. And, and, and originally, remember that has to be the inverse of KDC, so that's zero point one six seven. Okay, and so this should run as we saw it before. Okay, so this is the open loop, if you like. Right, there's no feedback. So now I want to close the loop, so I'm going to put in some. 
control gains in here, right? So let's start off by just putting, and um, I'm just going to put a very small feedback. Um, I don't know what value to use. I normally what you will do in a controls course is learn how to find the correct gains here that would give you a system that's absolutely stable, for example, or you would use other methods where you could fine tune those those gains to actually give you the, just the right kind of performance uh, with with the best relative stability, right? The, uh, but we're doing this all kind of experimentally. We're we're not we're not going to uh, do this uh, in that way and just play around with the simulation. So note it having such a small um, proportional gain doesn't help. So I'm going to just start increasing the proportional gain and see what happens. All right, so note even the, you start seeing a little bit of a change in the input because now that voltage is looking at the error and it's trying to reduce that error. So note you always have to look at this. Can your system perform this kind of so your job now is to is to is, is to start introducing. Now one of the things that that uh, for example, let's say now you didn't know your static gain very well. And I'm going to change this to 2. All right, so that's different from the actual system. So, so, now, no, see, so now you have some error. So now what you could do is say, hey, I want my feedback controller to try to start compensating for that. So you see how what it's doing is it's reduced, it's reduced the error, but boy, it's oscillating a lot. So what you can do is bring in little bit of integral control back off on the proportional thing and the integral might help you again look it's brought down the steady state error and it's still oscillating way too much so one of the things that derivative gain can help you with is that it can add more damping to the system and so see you can Again, play around with these control gains. Keep an eye. Wow, look at look at what this system is saying. You, in order to get the system to behave this way. And by the way, you could keep trying to do better. I can't remember before I had tuned it pretty nicely, but uh, but you can try to maybe. You can try to, let's say you could not tolerate any overshoot at all, you might actually make this pretty sluggish. And by sluggish, I mean, hey, bring down that proportional gain. I'm going to bring that down to 2.5, maybe. That way it doesn't jump up so much. <laughs> OK. And then maybe a little bit more. So I've got really good steady state error, right? Look, I've reduced that error, but I've still got way too much oscillation. I want to bring up the damping with the derivative gain. Whoa, actually I didn't do what I expected it to do, so. <laughs> so you can see, trying to tune blindly doesn't always work, does it? Okay. So I might actually have to uh, There you go. Well, you have to work a little bit more on 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 the. Um, let me bring this down. To nine. All right. So you can get it. I can't remember what those original gains were, but you can bring them down. You can go back and actually look at the video and try to try to tune this down and get the performance to work a little bit better. Okay. But you can see I have I have a bad model, but yet I can still get pretty decent control. I can actually tune this a little bit better to to bring down that that overshoot okay so you can actually come pretty close but remember this is an ideal model so um, I actually want to show you one other thing so let's move on to to the next step and remember that in our lab system we have a camera that has a time delay so 
uh, we want to introduce that in there and see what effect that has on it. Right. So this little model says that the uh, I'm measuring theta, but it's delayed by some tau, and that could be the delay in that say you might have in the uh, in the vision system. You can actually model that with a transfer function. A time delay in in the S domain looks as it's, it's like an exponential. And these the nice thing is that these time delays you know can be easily not easily, but if, at least in these block diagram descriptive languages, they've been in, they've been implemented as process uh, delays. Very practical. You see them in a lot of systems. There's either for modeling processes or um, hardware sensing, and also hu human actions. If you're trying to model the effect of a human or simulate a human, uh, time delays in humans can be modeled with this uh, real simple model this way. And the way that's done. Uh, in a lot of these block diagram languages like LabVIEW, is there, there's there's a model element called a transport delay, and basically all it does is just that you have an input, delays the output by some time that you would put in here. Okay.